Shia LaBeouf is downstairs, get down now. And I was like, don't have to tell me twice. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today's video is about Shia LaBeouf. Yes, we're talking about the just do it guy. And if you know him from that, and that alone, then I feel sorry for you. He is an amazing actor and he's in so many things like even Stevens Holes that was like my favorite film of all time as a teenager and it's always been my dream to meet him so stay tuned carry on watching if you want to know when I met him what was he really like okay because there's a lot of stuff in the media about him and I'm going to tell you the truth about Shia Leboff okay so stay tuned if you are not already subscribed to this channel subscribe right now and I know that there is a new YouTube algorithm that is killing every creator please make sure you are subscribed with the bell on and make sure you do give my videos a watch and a thumbs up with a comment underneath okay so let's get into the video okay so where did my Shia LaBeouf fan obsession start that's the question it started when I used to watch him on Even Stevens, it was a show on Disney Channel, so I used to watch it on there and I'd be like, yeah, this is so cool, I love this, this is so funny, and I used to think he was hilarious, I was just in love with him from there. Then he came out in the film Holes, and I was so obsessed, I probably watched it about 15 times, like I got it on DVD and everything. And then I just started watching a Shia LaBeouf in Disturbia, Transformers and all that jazz. Just loved any performance he did because I think he's a genuinely brilliant actor. And the way he comes across in interviews and stuff, so I thought, oh yeah, he's so funny. He's really nice. He's never rude to anyone, you know, he's never like a diva, like Hollywood diva like you might think some actors are. He was like, never like that on interviews. And then he went through that stage of, I'm not famous anymore when he wore that um, paper bag on his head on the red carpet because he didn't feel famous anymore. And he did so many of his own um, artsy type um, experiments and people would shun him and say, oh my God, Shia LaBeouf's gone crazy, Shia LaBeouf's done this, oh my God, he's not mentally stable. And if, do you know what, this is what really upset me, is the fact that we have the stigma still about mental illnesses and people's mental struggles. Like a lot of people really underestimate how people really truly feel and what they go through. And that really upset me because I thought, you know what, Shia LaBeouf is still a child star. And we all know the stigma, even us child stars. And I really found that sad when Shia LaBeouf did start to have all these problems and these issues in Hollywood and everyone was just going at him, just going at him about it and I was like that's so unfair because Shia LaBeouf is a human being like all of us so we all have struggles, we all have problems. So leave Shia alone! Okay so let's forward to December 2015. Shia LaBeouf comes to Liverpool and I was like oh my god he's in, he's in Liverpool. Oh my god he's in Liverpool but I was like oh, there's no way of me getting there and I don't want to just bombard him and fangirl him. Yeah so then there was this thing where you could call up and he was in a call centre with literally him and two other people would pick up the phone and divert it to Shia. So you pick up and his project was called Can You Touch My Heart? <laughs> like okay like i just rang was like i just want to speak to shia the buff i love him and maybe i can make a connection with him maybe 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 let me see so rang up and i got through and he went hello and i was like hi he <laughs> obviously pangirling like a crazy woman and um, and he was like okay so can you touch my heart and i went yeah sure i can <laughs> like come on who says that to shia the i was like yeah sure i can I was so starstruck, I don't even know what I spoke about, I think I briefly spoke about my job and I was like first of all I wanted to just say I'm a big fan of your work, you comedic genius, like I love how funny you are, like naturally and I love how you're a fantastic actor. Sorry Bashri died, I remember just going on and he was completely silent, then I heard him say thank you and then the female operator said thank you, bye. So I was just like sharing on Facebook like oh my god I just got through to Shia LaBeouf on this phone call thing and all my friends were like oh my god that's so cool and they loved it because I know a lot of my friends are fans of Shia as well so I was really chuffed with that. Then fast forward to present day 2018 and um, about February 2018 and um, my friend who 
was helping organise Manchester Film Festival and um, shared Shia LaBeouf coming to Manchester Film Festival and I was like Shia LaBeouf is coming to Manchester Shia LaBeouf my heart my soul my Shia LaBeouf is coming to Manchester I gotta get a ticket fast so. forward to the beginning of March okay it was March 1st till March 4th the Manchester Film Festival and he was coming on the 2nd because he had a documentary that was the reason he was there he had a documentary film of him traveling around the world with two other people and it was called Take Me Anywhere so it was when he literally um, just put like on social media where should I go and then people would say if you come here I'll, I'll accommodate you and it was mainly across America that replied so they just did it across America and people would just stay they just stay at people's house, talk to them, go move on and it was really interesting to watch actually so he was there to talk about that and I was like oh my god, oh my god, oh my god I'm gonna miss it, he's there at 3.30, I'm at work, I finish at 3.30 and my friend Manny said do you know what, don't worry about it he's talking at 3.30 but he'll be there for most of the evening anyway so I was like right that's it, I don't even care what clothes I'm in I'm in like work attire, I don't even care I will just literally leave work and drive straight so there. So it came to the week of the film festival and I was like, oh my god, this is so amazing. One weekend I'm in Paris for my birthday, next week I'm in Shia LaBeouf, I was over the moon. So it comes to about Thursday and we have a snow day at work and I was so happy because I was like, I can get there and I can go to the talk and I didn't even have to like rush out of work. So I took my time, got there. To be honest, I wish I made more effort with my appearance because I knew Shia LaBeouf wouldn't care how I looked, like it wasn't about that. It's just because in the photo, it literally looks like a mess. I hadn't washed my hair for the day before. Like I was like, oh, wash day is going to be on the weekend. Shia LaBeouf doesn't care. I could have got up early, straightened my hair. But no, I just left it three day old waves, curls, with a beret. And I hadn't even put lenses in. I just want my glasses. And I look cute. But not cute enough, like, yeah, I will insert the picture here or I will just put it above my face anyway. So this is a picture, so cute, but not cute enough. <laughs> so I was so excited to meet him, so I filmed some of his talk and I will insert a clip here. It was, they were like, no one's allowed to get up, let Shia LaBeouf um, leave the theatre and I was probably the only crazy fangirl so I was like okay I'll sit down but I can't wait to meet him later so I was just kind of freaking out everyone there was really really respectful of Shia and other people because it was probably for his own safety obviously there was a full cinema theatre full of people listening to him talk and imagine them swarming and fangirling would have been so ridiculous because a lot of those people in there were um, media buffs like me but even more so a lot of them were all their own cinematographers own filmmakers stuff like that so, so totted on and um, i went to watch a few films like full films from shorts i met so many amazing directors and actors and producers and cinematographers so i go to watch shia LaBeouf's documentary i'm watching it i'm enjoying it and then it finishes and my friend manny goes shia had to leave a couple of minutes early because obviously you know again because he came in watched it himself so again to avoid the mob I got a text towards the end when it was just just before the credits so I didn't leave I was still watching the whole thing it was fantastic and Manny goes Shia LaBeouf is downstairs get down now and I was like don't have to tell me twice got up got my sister I was like no come on let's go let's go let's go and then we snuck out like credits are coming up I was like okay before everyone else comes down we come downstairs and I see him I see him in this green jacket and a cap and I'm like, oh my god, shut them off. I am freaking out, I am fangirling to the max. You know how it would feel to meet your one of the people that you look up to, one of the people you absolutely adore. That you'd you know you freak out, like let's not lie, everyone, everyone will find girl. So I was like, oh, okay, and I stood behind him because he was like literally, I was stood in front of him and he was talking to two people, but the girl in front, she was getting upset. So I stepped back, me and my sister, because we thought, okay, they're in a personal conversation. She even handed him a line, he went, I will read this, I will read it, and genuinely hugged her. I was like, this is so cute. And then he just kept stepping back with those two because I thought, okay, maybe we're invading the space, you know, they're talking about something personal. So I just respected that. 
and then I saw my friend Manny, I ran up to my friend Manny, I was like, I'm so nervous, I'm fangirly, I can't do it, I don't think he wants to speak to me, I think he wants to go because he's edging away, and my friend was like, just go. Now, or you won't get the opportunity again, because you don't know how busy he is going to get later, and I was like, do you know what, you're right, so I just stood behind the couple and waited my turn. By the way, I had to film this way because my memory card got full and I missed it out. So I said to him, I was like, remember when you were in Liverpool like a couple of years ago and you did the phone thing? I was like, I spoke to you and I don't know if I touched your hand or anything. And, and he started smiling and I was like, oh my God, shine the book. Oh my God, he's smiling at me. I was like, so happy. And then he was like, oh really? Like, okay. I was like, did I, I don't know if I touched your heart or not. You know, in the end, he was like, well, I don't know. What did you say? And I was like, do. I was like, I don't remember, I think I started talking about myself and work and how much I enjoyed your work and he was like, oh, okay, you know, and then I was like, I, again, I was still so starstruck, I remember bits of what I said, I spoke about my work and then I started speaking about my travelling, but he was like, oh, okay, I'm sure you touched my heart and, you know, if I spoke about um, my work and why I do it, he was like, oh, okay, that's great. And then my little sister asked him, she was like, so how do you get into it, how do you do more travelling, how do you just, you know, go and explore and he went, just do it. You just do it, it's simple, you just do it. And I was just thinking, oh my God, <laughs> did he just say, just do it to my little sister? Cause I think he did. <laughs> I was so happy he said that. Obviously he just said in the camera, he just went, just do it. You just do it, you just gotta do it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, just do it, cool. And um, so I was so happy. And then I just started talking about traveling. He's like, oh, that's really cool. Like, oh yeah, you've been here, oh, it's dangerous there. Oh wow, like that's gotta take a lot to go there on your own. You know, it's not safe. I was like, I know, like Thailand and come out. I know, right, Shia, like, right, Shia, like, like he was my mate. He was so down to earth, so nice. Like I can't even tell you, absolutely loved him. So then we just carried on talking. Then he was kind of edging away because there was a queue behind us, and I think he just had to go, you know, do a um, talk, like just a press release type thing. So he was stepping away and I just shook his hand. I was like, oh my God, I should have hooked him. Like I just shook his hand. I was like, nice to meet you. It's really nice to meet you. He was like, yeah, and you too. Take care. And I was like, I love him. I love Shia. And then he was on the red carpet and he was doing a press release. Yes, yeah, so there was another person, like he was a photographer for Manchester Film Festival and he was shaking loads. He was like, oh, can we take a picture? And he was like faffing with his camera and trying to flip it. I was like, do you want me to just take you in here? So I took it and then before Shia LaBeouf went, he just looked at me and went, and I was like, <laughs> I smiled at me again. So excited. And then, like I said, my friend was organising it. Yeah, and um, at the end of the um, couple of hours, he was like, oh, do you want us to call you a taxi to the hotel? He went, no, I'll just walk. I remember where it is. That's how cool he was. That's how down to earth he was. Like, he was just so nice. He was walking around Manchester. Like, he wasn't, he didn't have any security, nothing like that. And then, even my friend, my other friend who I told, I was like you know Shia LaBeouf's coming and he said yeah he was just sitting in a takeaway and I just went up to him and hi you okay and he just started having a conversation with him that's how down to earth he is he's so humble and so nice and I really really hate Hollywood for demonizing him in the way they did or laughing at him and mocking him for his struggles or the stuff that he was trying to do because I feel like everyone's journey is their own and I just think that people should always be given that second chance and he's done nothing wrong it's just he's just trying to explore and find himself and find out what he wants to do and I feel like everyone struggles with stuff and I feel like he's just such a nice guy so my friend Manny who was organizing was just like how are you how are you Shia because I was thinking yeah no one probably asks him how he's doing they always talk about them including me but never tell him about him. And he was like, do you know what? Just trying to stay sober. And I thought that was just the nicest thing to hear. Not in the fact that, okay, he's struggling, but like the fact that he's trying to be better. And even was like at the end of um, his little talk, cause I want to thank my mom for always supporting me and my wife and this and that. I was like, that is so nice. Cause I feel like everyone needs a support system and I'm glad he has one. So in a nutshell, what is Shia LaBeouf like? there i've said it he's so nice so humble really down to earth guy and i really really hate that people demonize him because he's been through a lot and it's okay to be through a lot and it's okay to act in certain ways because he's not done anything like criminally okay besides go to like rallies about um anti-trump and stuff which is great like we don't like trump so I just feel like he's such a lovely person and I feel like people misjudge him 
in a nutshell, Shia LaBeouf is 10 out of 10, an amazing person. Don't discredit him and don't discredit people with mental health issues. So I'll actually put in the description box below any numbers you can contact if you are feeling like you are suffering with any issues or you want someone to talk to and um, I will put some UK ones and some international ones in the description box below so you do have someone to talk to so you don't just feel like you have no one and um, yeah and hope that helps but thank you for watching guys watch my first story time video this is pretty cool guys okay thanks for watching bye <laughs>